Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be looking at the random variables of TX and KX. And this forms part of chapter 7, survival models for subject CT4. So yeah, let's jump straight into the material. So we've got the random variables TX and KX. What exactly are they? Well, if we look at the definition of TX, it is the complete future lifetime of a life aged X and it is a continuous random variable. This gives us a lot of information, so let's just unpack it. The first word we're seeing here is complete, and um, the best way to think of this is we're gonna be looking later at KX, which is the curtailed future lifetime, or the incomplete future lifetime. So what we mean by complete is we're counting everything. So that's why this is a continuous random variable, because if the future lifetime is 50 years, uh, 6 months, 3 days, and you know, 22 seconds, the TX is going to capture all of that information, it is the complete future lifetime. Also, let's look to the next word, future. So this is something that we're going to be making a prediction about, we're going to be forecasting. And because it's into the future, we don't know it for certain. Hence why it is a random variable. So we don't know what the value is going to be and it can take on any number of different values. And the value that we're looking at or why it's important, it is the lifetime of a life. So let's say you have a little puppy and you're like, how much longer is my little puppy going to live? So if your puppy is one years old, um, you want to know for how many more years um, will you have your puppy uh, for. And obviously the longer uh, or the greater the value, the better it is because it means the puppy survives longer. So let's have a quick little um, example regarding TX and then I'm going to come and talk about KX. So I've got a timeline and like I stress in all my videos, timelines are very important. They help you to visualize the problem. So let's talk about, um, I actually did this I think when I was 22, so uh, it was a little bit of an example of myself, but yeah, let's pretend that this timeline is my age or my, my lifespan. So at age 22, how much longer am I going to be living for? And we don't know, we don't know, I could die tomorrow, so it could be the very next day, um, I could you know, they could discover new technology and I live for another 200 years. But let's say I unfortunately die at age 72 and a half. It means that my complete future lifetime from the age of 22 would be 50 and a half. And this is where it does get a little bit tricky, is because we are looking at the difference between the start age and the end age. That is what the complete future lifetime is. We're not worrying about the previous years that I've survived. We're only concerned with where I am now and where am I going to be finishing. And again, I want to just stress again that this is a random variable. So this is going to have an expected value. This is going to have its own variance. We're not sure exactly where, when I'm going to die. Um, now let's look at something just a little bit simpler, and that is uh, KX. And KX is the curtailed future lifetime um, of a life aged X. And the big difference is, is that this is a discrete random variable. So whereas the continuous, um, it could take any value um, between you know, natural numbers and whole numbers and stuff like that, the discrete random variable can only take, um, you know, it is a defined set. So what we're looking for here is we're just interested in the amount of years. So in this case above, we're just, that's the mathematical formula, is we're going to be taking away um, the decimal point and we're just going to be looking at the whole completed years. And why this is, why we'd want to look at the curtailed future lifetime, it comes down to insurance and various annuity products and stuff like that. In some instances, um, with regards to pensions and retirements, people get paid um, an amount at the beginning of every year. 
So the reason why the insurance company would want you to be interested in KX and not uh, TX is that they know that on my 72nd uh, birthday, I'll get my lump sum. Um, I don't get anything six months in. I only get on my 73rd and my 74th. And so they just want to know, okay, for this person, he's going to be living another 50 years. Let's say he retires at age 60. That means we're going to have to give him 12 payments. And that's where it comes in. It's just a simplification. Um, it was done because back in the day, they didn't have super advanced computers. But now with today's technology, I mean, you can see continuous random variables are getting more and more used over the curtailed discrete random variables. But yeah, that is um, the random variables of TX and KX. Key things to remember, they're random variables. And you want to look at it's the time between the start point, which is X, and the end point, which is the random unknown point. And yeah, um, these are going to be the other topics we're going to be talking about. So if you want to um, watch them as well, subscribe to the channel or come back and check later. And yeah, hopefully they'll be uploaded by then. Thanks guys for watching and study hard. Cheers.